Look at our factories, 275 civilian factories, military factories, 167 military factories, 58 dockyards, 2.89 million manpower. These are all core states. From this point onwards, the world is your oyster. You can go wherever you want. There is nothing that can stop you. But first, if you like these guides, hit that like button, subscribe for more of these, and ring the bell icon to be notified whenever I upload more content. Now, on to the guide. Hey folks, Bitter Steel here, back with another guide for Hearts of Iron 4. Today, I'm bringing you the Imperial Federation as the United Kingdom. Let's start out by getting our affairs in order. Our research will be fairly standard. Get the mechanical computing, basic machine tools and construction. And for our fourth slot, we will be getting fighter ones because a few good fighters in this patch are better than a lot of garbage planes. For production, we will be ramping up infantry equipment and towed artillery. We won't need tanks, we won't need interwar bombers, and our spare factories can go into support equipment. Now, let's see construction. We will be maximizing in military factories in the highest infrastructure provinces, being the Greater London Area, Sussex, the Midlands, and Lancashire. Also, in preparation of our invasion of Canada, we will be increasing the port capacity as well as the infrastructure. Now what I like to do is to prioritize the port and get it to around level 7. And once it reaches that level, I maximize the infrastructure. Now, the army. Let's collect our troops from all the far-flung reaches in. of the empire. Britain starts with a fairly large military, but it is spread out across Ready. the entire empire. So once you've gathered them all up, you should have around 36 divisions. That's right, exactly 36 divisions. Start by changing all of them to the standard infantry template. We won't need cavalry and we won't need tanks. So just bog standard infantry divisions. Then let's split them up into task forces for future use. Or rather, 18 of them will be used for Canada. But since the infrastructure there is still too low, we can keep them in London and exercise them. Then we can take 10 divisions and we will yes, use these to suppress South Africa when they decide to break away. Again, make sure all of these are the standard infantry division template. And for our remaining troops, let's take five of those and set a naval invasion order starting in Christmas Island. That's the port just below the Dutch East Indies and towards Perth in Australia, as well as the tiles right next to Perth so the naval invasion can be supported should they garrison the port. Then the remaining three units can go to Fiji, which is your territory just above New Zealand. And they will have a naval invasion hitting Auckland and the tile just below Auckland. As well as producing a few more infantry divisions, around 10 or so at a high priority. We will be force deploying these as they become available and assign roughly three to four of these directly to the New Zealand invasion. So you can quickly rush New Zealand and then fire a supporting naval invasion towards Sydney and Canberra. And the rest of these units will be used to form a task force to hit the British Raj or India once they break away. Remember, high equipment priority so we can actually get these units out. And once they've been deployed, Keep training and reinforcing your divisions with any fresh equipment. Up. And take these armies and put them under good old Monty as a field marshal and give them some decent generals as well. Now, finally, for our focuses, we will be picking a changing course because the monarchist path is both much cooler and much easier than doing it the democratic way. So. 
let's kick things off and see where we end up. There we go, a change in course. Now you'll see we can't do the king's part yet. There's a, an event chain surrounding Edward's marriage to go through first. But while we wait for that, we can head for a limited rearmament, get ourselves some factories. Speaking of factories, let's use our free dockyards to build some transports. And limited rearmament is done. And with that focus done, we'll just head for Reinforce the Empire since we are missing the 5% world tension to head down the Shadow Scheme. Now this may change as China and uh, Spain kick off, so we'll have to keep our eye on that. But for now, Reinforce the Empire. We will be hoarding our political power as well until after the King Edward the Eighth little marriage event is done and afterwards we'll immediately spend that power on some excellent political advisors that we don't have access to as of yet. So just hoard political power until you have completed the King's party. Research wise we're heading down dispersed industry. Just continue focusing research into your industry and if you have some left over let's start swapping over our land doctrine towards superior firepower. The Edward VIII abdication crisis. We're going to insist on a royal marriage. This will lead us down to the King's party and the monarchist path. As more factories become available, let's start focusing them towards our artillery. We will need a hefty chunk of artillery first. Guns will need a lesser amount of, as we'll be swapping infantry battalions out for artillery battalions. And with reinforce the empire done, and Spain still not having itself a civil war. Our little focus here, the shadow scheme, is not available yet. So let's just head it over to service overseas in the meantime. Now that our air force is all gathered up, let's merge these air wings and see what we have to work with. I suggest getting rid of the naval bombers and the uh, tactical bombers. We won't be using them for now. And the rest of these planes can be set to exercising. Shift exercise so they stop when they reach level 3. And these can be used for supporting our armies at a later stage. When these events hit you, always pick the option that costs you political power. Never go with the ones that give you the event King Edward abdicates. This will lock you out of the monarchist path. We always want to keep pushing forward. Let's work on some weapons and equipment as we will be going to war a little earlier than with in other playthroughs. There we go. Nationalist Spain has gone to war. And this has bumped us up to 5% world tension. Now when we go and look... We have the Shadow Scheme available. It would cost us roughly 15 days of progress, but the ability to continue down this chain is well worth it. So I suggest dumping service overseas in exchange for the Shadow Scheme. We lose 15 days of progress, 15 political power, which in the grand scheme of things is really nothing. Now with our five army experience, let's start using that to change our divisions slightly. Let's pick our infantry division and start swapping out one infantry battalion for an artillery battalion. And for our next five army XP, we'll do the same to come to a nice 7-2 basic infantry division, 20 width. Now that the port is complete, Let's drag our infrastructure up to the top so we can actually move some troops into Labrador. There we go, the shadow scheme is complete. And now let's head down to industrial effort, a nice research bonus to our industry. You will get this event, there is no way around it. The Dominions have decided to break away. That doesn't matter, we will simply make them. Now we have completed industrial effort, now we have two options here. Either we take the Royal Ordnance Factories, giving us six military factories, or we stockpile political power for 33 days and then go for the focus here, the King's Party. Now, personally, considering our very large shortage of weapons, I suggest going with the Royal Ordnance Factories and just starting the focus to get the King's Party 30 days later than you otherwise would. I, I think the six military factors are just too good to pass up at this point. Now with some of our excess troops that we've been training, let's create a new army and send them over to Ceylon. They can hang out there. They will be used at a later date to invade India. And add four more so we can train another five divisions so that we have ten to invade India with. As you can see here, India has released Indian Pakistan and Indian Burma. This is nothing to be concerned about. The, this won't influence the rest of the run. We can still annex India and continue on. 
once we annex India in the peace deal, Pakistan and Burma will be free. You will still be fighting them. And you can then annex them in a separate peace deal later on. There we go, the royal marriage of Edward VIII. And once we finish this focus, we can get ourselves the King's Party. Now these five additional units that we've trained for our Indian task force, we can deploy to this tiny island, I believe Andaman, that is just below Burma. And they will be used to invade Burma when the time comes. From this point on, we also stop all recruitment and focus entirely on reinforcing the units that we do have. And with that, the Royal Ordnance Factories are done. We have a nice chunk of additional military factories and we can start on the King's Party. And another five army experience that we use to turn this template into our ideal template, except that we might want to add some more recon to it later. I suggest for support companies to also go for military police early. We will be occupying quite a bit of land and we'll have to suppress that. Now with our artillery up to 15 factories, let's also bump up the infantry equipment production as well. And with that, the King's party is in place and will go down, God save the King. Now for your army, let them stop exercising now and only train up the divisions that still need to get to level 3. This way you stop using so much equipment and you give your divisions a chance to resupply and replenish. Now we'll be investing in political advisors. The first one I suggest you get is David Lloyd George for an extra 15% of political power gain. And with God Save the King in place, we will move on to consolidate the British Isles, which means we will be annexing Ireland. And for that purpose, let's take our divisions that we were going to send to Canada and have them make a pit stop over in Northern Ireland. And they can quickly overrun Ireland in a matter of days, giving us access to their factories and uh, some of their manpower. Not to mention a nice bit of army experience that we can use to optimize our divisions some more. And for our second political advisor, let us pick Oswald Mosley for a bit of stability, but mostly his consumer goods factories reduction. There we go, we have consolidated the British Isles and set ourselves up to appeal to Imperial Loyalists, followed by bring the Dominions back into the fold. Once we do this one, we will be manually declaring on one of the Dominions who isn't Canada, because Canada is guaranteed by the US, the other ones aren't. So we will get to that later. First, appeal to Imperial Loyalists. Now, appeal to Imperial Loyalists unlocks Imperial Loyalist decisions. We will not be doing any of these, simply because this creates a second nation with the same name, but a different tag. Uh, for example, a, a, it would create an Imperial Canada instead of a regular Canada. And if we were to beat regular Canada, Imperial Canada would take over, but it would not have the Canada tag, which is required in the game files to give you cores on everything once we do use the Imperial Federation. So long story short, just don't do any of the decisions. We'll do the fighting ourselves. And now to bring Ireland back into the fold, just declare war and aggressively attack. They are a pushover. This should not take long at all. And in a matter of days, we have annexed Ireland. Take all states and we are done here. Now take these divisions, these 18 divisions, and head over to Canada. Man this front line, draw an offensive line somewhat over here, just past all of Canada's victory points. And these divisions should be of high enough quality and enough numbers to steadily push Canada back and you should have no trouble conquering them. Now with our war being prepared we have to make sure we, ha we actually have naval supremacy in the areas where we are going to be invading. Just make sure you have ships in the area so that you actually have the naval supremacy and the invasions can actually launch and that they are supported with some shore bombardments because some of these uh, ports will be defended. Not heavily, but they will be defended. For our production now, let's start ramping up support equipment. It's the only thing we're really behind on now. Imperial to Imperial Loyalist is done. Now we had to bring the Dominions back into the fold. This will give us Annex War Goals on our former, dom former Dominions, excluding India. For our last political advisor, we will pick Winston Churchill for war support. Now we can go ahead and go ahead of time on our artillery as well. Artillery is a great source of 
soft attack and it's not that much ahead of time. That one year penalty is something we can eat in exchange for a better cannon. There we go. We have to bring the Dominions back into the fold and to achieve that we will be declaring war on Australia. Why Australia? Because Australia is in a faction with Canada, New Zealand and South Africa. While Canada is also in that faction, but they have a guarantee on them. Their independence is guaranteed by the United States. So if you declare war on Canada, the US will get involved. While if we declare war on Australia, everyone else will also get involved, but they won't pull the United States in. So Australia it is. And there we go, declare war and we can get this party started. With that war declared, let's prepare to draw India into the fray by working on our Ceylon forward operating base, followed by Reclaim the Jewel in the Crown. Now we can launch our naval invasions and Order. consider using the force attack button when your troops start the engagements of the ports to ensure you actually capture them and not have to lose time by reinvading them. Now, for some reason, South Africa does not join on its own every time so we can just declare war on them separately and this army here is enough to take care of them now near perth what you also yeah, want to capture is the airfield so we can use it as a staging ground to give us air control over southern australia uh, enabling us to hold this little front line here and making sure the australians don't throw us back into the ocean now here near perth you will take no more offensive actions at all this is all the territory you'll take here. For New Zealand, you're going to be pushing all the way towards Wellington. This should be enough to capitulate New Zealand. And once you've taken New Zealand in its entirety, you will launch another naval invasion towards Sydney and Canberra and take as much territory here as you can with your five divisions. This is to ensure that Australia doesn't suddenly become another major in this war because right now Canada is the only major faction which means we just need to take one province from southern South Africa, one from New Zealand, one from Australia and then capitulate Canada and we will be able to take them in our peace deal or puppet them or whatever. If we have not touched them, we will not be able to include them in the peace deal. This goes for India as well. Once we have the opportunity to declare war on India, we will rush them, take a port tile from them and hold a defensive perimeter around it until we capitulate Canada. These provisional governments, just ignore them, say they're not ready, we don't need them. Political power will first be used to upgrade to limited conscription. We can always use some more manpower. As you can see, we have a very easy time dealing with Canada. The hardest part about all this will be the fact that we need to walk all the way to Vancouver. But that's a problem for later. We'll just continue pushing them. And if it starts taking too long, you can always change a few of these divisions to standard cavalry and just rush them through the enemy lines towards Vancouver if you really want to capitulate them quickly. There we go, we've knocked New Zealand out of this. We can take these divisions, set up a naval invasion from Auckland towards Sydney, and they will be used to keep the Australians in check. You can see resistance to occupation is starting to get a little high, so we'll be changing some templates around. Let's change our cavalry brigade, Let's give them military police, and throw on some more cavalry units. There we go, that should do. Save that template. And we will set this as our standard template to control occupied territories. Our naval invasion has hit Sydney, so we will quickly spread out, take as much territory as we can before the Australians realize what's up, making sure not to give up control of the port and not to push out further. Now to prepare our naval invasions of India, so hit the port and the tile next to the port to provide some support. Ready to move. Same thing here, we will hit the port and the tiles next to the port to provide support. This might be a good time to start producing some armored cars. It will be very handy to keep resistance to occupation down in the late game. As for our government, 
Now we'll hit partial mobilization next. We can move some more airplanes towards Ceylon and use these to support our invasion of India. There we go. Reclaim the jewel in the crown. Let's launch these naval invasions. Let's set our next focus towards surface overseas and declare war on India and also declare war on Indian Burma. Again, they have joined the Commonwealth, which means if we knock Canada out, they will all capitulate at the same time. India will have garrisoned its ports by now. So again, try to use the force attack to ensure we can actually land troops there and supporting attacks from the tiles next to the port to make sure we can drive the Indian divisions off the port. Immediately spread out away from the port to ensure that it is safe from attack. And with the port of Madras taken, immediately start working on setting up a defensive perimeter to make sure the port is shielded from direct attack. These defensive lines should hold against the Indian divisions, provided your AI does not do strange things. Now we just need to capitulate the Canadians. As you can see, Canada has nothing left here, but we just have a lot of territory to walk across. So to speed this up, we can take a few of these divisions and just change them into standard cavalry divisions. They have extra speed and just have them move very quickly forward. Select them and rush them forward. We can change them back to actual infantry divisions later. Let's ramp up our infantry division production and training. We will need a lot of divisions because after this is concluded, we will prepare a little bit and then take the war to the United States for some more cheesy goodness. The service overseas complete, we can head down to encourage colonial elite. And with some more political power, let's invest it in our infantry expert. Get some infantry division attack and defense. There we go. Canada has capitulated and we have to take our time with this peace deal as it's rather important. First off, let's pass a few times. Get ourselves a nice little bank of power points. First stop, India. We will annex India outright. India has a lot of nonsense involved with the Imperial Conference and it would not give us course if we annex them through the conference. So we'll just annex them now, get that out of the way. Everything else, we're simply going to puppet, giving some of these nations ridiculous names. And that is our first conference done. Peace conference completed. As you now you'll see, we're still at war with Pakistan and Myanmar. So we are going to clean up these pockets and continue the war with Pakistan and Myanmar by aggressively pushing in. They should not have any troops. If they do, it's not a lot. Take this time to set up your initial front lines with the US as well. We will be going to war with them. For our next focus, we will hit the Imperial Conscription. This will start the daily autonomy, autonomy takedown for our subjects. Pakistan has capitulated, same deal here, we simply annex them, take all their states. For our next bit of political power, let's invest that as well into a chief of the army, army maneuver, get some division speed. There we go, Myanmar capitulated, annex these as well, take all states. Now we're going to line up our divisions on the American border. Yes, before we declare war on the Americans, we are going to need quite a few more troops. And for that purpose, we are mass recruiting. So to optimize our divisions somewhat, we are going to swap out these engineers for cavalry recon. If we have the time, we can make some more motorized or maybe even some light armored and upgrade to those later. With Imperial conscription done, we can head down, unite the Anglosphere, giving us a war goal against the United States. And additionally, it gives us cores on the Irish states that we conquered earlier. Now, before we're going to use our war goal, that's going to come in in the next 30-ish uh, days. We're going to wait for these units to finish recruitment so we can fill out this front line completely. And additional political power can go towards our army logistics experts. There you go, unite the Anglosphere. We have our war goal ready to fire when we need it. 
what we want to do now is Commonwealth ties, but we can't because our dominions are not in a faction with us. Quick way to remedy that is go to Canada, create a faction. Your faction name here can be whatever. Let's just go with the British Empire. Go. One day tick by, they have joined us. And now we can do the Commonwealth ties, improving our opinion and enabling us to go down the path towards Imperial Federation. Now with most of those units deployed, wait for them to reach their front lines. It will be difficult to ship troops across once we are at war because the US Navy is quite powerful. Even though the Royal Navy is a fierce contender, it will make shipping troops across safely difficult. So let's try to win this war with what we have on the continent here. With Commonwealth ties done, we can start developing our provinces. Let's develop in Australia first. Now for our last military high command, we'll take the army regrouping expert. And with our army in position, we're going to declare war on the United States of America. As you can see, France has joined this conflict. Uh, there's nothing to be concerned about. You, you don't really have to worry about France. They will get knocked out by the Germans eventually. As you can see, the war against the US is not really a challenge. This early in the game, they have not had much time to ramp up their military, while we have a significant force ready. And with the development in Australia done, we can head on to either New Zealand, Canada or South Africa. Doesn't really matter. But at this point, we're going to stop spending political power and hoard all of it to pour into the Imperial Federation and Imperial Conference later. Now, should you be so inclined, you can use a few of your spare troops that you've just recruited to naval invade France and knock them out of the war a little quicker. Give yourself some more war score. As you can see, the US poses very little in the way of a challenge. And we just keep hitting these development focuses. There we go, the United States has capitulated, and France is on its way out as well. This should not take much longer. Now, in preparation of this event, we're going to make some changes here. Let's start improving our relations with all of our vassal states. So, Canada, South Africa, the Emu Empire, Australia, and New Zealand to improve relations. And on top of that, we are going to start lend leasing a lot of equipment to these guys. About 5% of your monthly production in guns, artillery, and support equipment should do for each of them. And some convoys, because they don't have a lot of convoys, most of them. And specifically for South Africa, because they have a few national spirits that give them more autonomy. I'm just going to build things for them in their territory. Give that the highest priority. And with the French knocked out, we have our peace deal. Now we want to be careful with this because Germany is involved. But we do have a lot to work with here. So start by taking all of these coastal states that you control. So the Germans don't really get a foothold in here. Take as much as you can in the turn. And every time, take as much as you can. Coastal territory, see, so they don't, so they aren't able to link up the territory that they would be conquering. This makes the AI less inclined to take things. And with mainland US under your control, you can take some more land if you feel like it or end the peace deal here. I just like to take all of these little islands as well, make the empire just that little bit bigger. While I'm at it, just take some of these small French islands as well. They won't be needing them anymore. And a bit of a land grab in Africa. Reminds us of the good old days. And with that, I think our peace deal is done. Let's see what we end up with. Oh yes, we're gonna have to click through a lot of these. Here we go. I think we got most of Africa, a bunch of islands, some stuff in Southeast Asia, and the United States of America. 
Now let's prepare for our Imperial Conference. For our upcoming Imperial Conference, we will need to prepare a bit. First of all, we need to have the opinion of all of these Dominions as high as possible. Absolutely max it out. In the case of Canada, we will be giving them back Labrador and Newfoundland. We're also going to be land leasing them as much as we can and we're going to keep improving our relationships. To add on to that, we are going to use one of our decisions here to create the Pan North American State, which cedes all US cores to Canada, the ones located on the North American continent. This will give the province of Canada a new name. The tag doesn't change, however. It will turn into the Dominion of North America. This is great because if and when we annex the Dominion of North America in the Imperial Federation, we also get the cores on the US, making us the absolute most powerful country on Earth. So first things first, let's return some land to Canada. They're now called the province of Canada. Return territory, Newfoundland and Labrador. That should cheer them up considerably. And let's give them the North American state. There we go, the Dominion of North America. Other than that, we are going to keep hoarding political power until we are ready to do the Imperial Conference and building up these development focuses. We also want to reduce all of our puppets to a integrated puppet, except for British Malaya. They already are an integrated puppet, but their opinion doesn't matter at all in the conference. Now, at this point, we could go for the Imperial Conference, but I believe we may need a little more time to build up political power for the events. And let's have a look at our puppets. Their opinion of us is high. Our relations are improved, absolutely as high as possible. So improve relations with them again, and then set up for holding the Imperial Conference. As this conference is ticking, keep checking up on your puppets to get those improved relations in again. There we go. The Imperial Conference is complete. We now have access to a few decisions here. If you have a large bank of political power, you can run through all of these and just invest the maximum amount of political power to get certain buffs from this. Or if you're a little short and you definitely want this to work, you can just go straight for Discuss Imperial Federation. Now, if you're playing this non-Iron Man mode, this is the moment where you want to save your game because no matter how much you prepared, there's always a small factor of RNG involved. We try to minimize it by raising that opinion, by sending them equipment, by building things in their backyard. But the truth remains, there is some RNG involved. So let's get right into it and see if we've become lucky or not. So we're going to spend a tremendous diplomatic effort to persuade the Dominions. There we go. All four of them have agreed to the conference. We will be stronger as one. Now, all that remains is to reduce these to a lower autonomy level, like so. And we should be able to use the final focus, Imperial Federation. There we go. The Imperial Federation is complete. Let's zoom out. All of this is now our land, Imperial Federation largest most powerful country in the world look at our factories 275 civilian factories military factories 167 military factories 58 dockyards 2.89 million manpower unlimited conscription these are all core states the entirety of the canada and the us australia as well just not India, but that's not relevant. We have enough as is. From this point onwards, the world is your oyster. You can go wherever you want. There is nothing that can stop you. And as a nice little bonus, if you still need the achievements, at this point, you can still declare the American monarchy. And boop, the United Kingdom of America, right there with your wife, Queen Wallace I and her extremely lengthy title. Now, I hope you liked this video. If you enjoyed the guide and want to see more of it, like the video, hit that subscribe button and tell me in the comments 
what you think should be my next guide. If you disliked it, tell me in the comments what you disliked about it. I'm always looking for some more feedback. Hit that dislike button and I'll see you for the next video. Goodbye.